So let's go over the fascial expansion for the elbow. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be combining fascial research with acupuncture. Acupressure, primarily in this particular video, but I also mentioned some key points about acupuncture. So first, let's talk a little bit about fascia. Fascia is often defined as one interconnecting tensional network. Essentially, it adapts its fibers or arrangement and density according to the tensional demand. So what this means is, as we put stress on a particular area, the fascia itself is going to change, it's going to morph, it's going to elongate. And we'll find that as we get in there, we can actually affect multiple structures by getting into the fascia. So first thing, let's talk about a few fascial planes here. There's the deep fascial plane of the arm. This is called the brachial fascia, also known as the deep fascia of the arm. It's, it's a thick layer of white connective tissue that covers the muscles. It is a component of the sheath that also contains the anti-brachial fascia. So we're getting a little technical here, but these are important terms to know. The brachial fascia divides the arm muscles into components by forming medial and lateral intramuscular septa. So if we go on the lateral side here, and we go on the outside here, we're gonna get a band of connection tissue. So Mickey, if I start getting in and around here, mm -hmm. do you feel that tightness over here, like yeah. in, in between? Yeah. There's actually a nerve that goes on both the posterior and the anterior side. And if I work my way down there, I can actually affect multiple neurological structures by getting on that. And then we talk about the antibrachial fascia. It is a thick white connective tissue again, covering the forearm muscles and it attaches to the radial and ulnar styloid. So we're talking all the way down, even though we're talking about the fascial expansion for the elbow, we're talking about something that goes all the way down and connects right to the wrist here. So it is basically uh, pierced or connected to the palmaris longus tendon and it continues with the fascia of the hand. So right from the elbow all the way down. So other muscles such as the flexor carpi ulnaris and the ulnaris muscles lie right underneath it. While wrist, wrist flexors and extensor retinaculum uh, reinforce this whole antibrachial fascia. So next thing you wanna do is we wanna talk about some very specific acupuncture points. The first one we're gonna talk about is large intestine 11. Now, this is located on the lateral end of the elbow crease. So if we take the elbow crease right across the end here. Good. When the elbow is flexed at 90 degrees, we're gonna find it right on the end here. Now, in Chinese medicine, we often talk about measurements which are chun. So we actually have to take Mickey's hand here and the width of her thumb right there is a chun. So kind of hard for me to take that thumb and put it here. <laughs> <laughs> so if we're right here, about one chun above the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. So we got the crease here, Lateral up condyle, right there. So it's about right here. Do you feel the point right there, Mickey? Yep. <clears throat> okay. So what we would do is we get on this particular area and stimulate it, not just rubbing it in a circle, but actually getting in and moving it around here a bit. Feeling that quite a bit? Yes. Okay. Now, besides doing the fascial expansion for the elbow. If you would like to know more about particular acupuncture points that I mentioned, we're actually gonna produce specific videos on each point so I can explain in greater detail. So I'm not gonna give you a whole lecture on the one point here. You okay? Oh yeah, it's getting okay. easy out. So we would probably get in there and stimulate this point for about, well, it could be 30 seconds to a few minutes, even up to three minutes there. Feeling that right there? Mm -hmm. Quite a bit? Starting to ease off a bit? Yeah. Okay. More again. Good. Okay, let's move on to the next point. Okay, now from large intestine 11, let's move on to large intestine 12. Now this is actually quite easy to find because we went to the lateral crease, just up from that. Now, just about one tune above large intestine 11, we'll find large intestine 12. So just moving up just a little bit there. Again, Mickey, let's take your thumb here. And then just one more point up from there. Good. So right about there. Feeling that right there? Yes. Okay. Now, if we're talking about traditional Chinese medicine, they would use this for numbness and spasms of the elbow and the arm. 
and it's definitely a good point for lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow. You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, and again, we're gonna get in there and we're gonna move this around a bit. Feel that? A bit more, more so, yes. Yeah. So we're gonna get in and we're gonna move it counterclockwise, clockwise, but we're also going to roll it a bit. Again, 30 seconds to just a few minutes. Now, if I was actually needling, I would be careful because I'm right over the bone here and I wouldn't want to go in too deep on that. So I'd probably only be about, oh, I'd probably go in about 0.5 to one tune in terms of depth, but no, no deeper than that. You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so this is large intestine 12. So let's move on to the next point, which is triple heater five. Now, this is kind of an interesting point because we're actually dealing with fascial expansions of the elbow and we're starting to move away a little bit here. From the elbow, you say, well, how can this actually influence this area here? It's because we have a large area of neurological input. We have a thickening of the fascia and the fascia has 10 times the neurological receptors in it as compared to normal muscle. So what we're gonna do here, this particular point, triple heater five, is a point that lies on the back of the forearm between the ulna and the radius. Now, this is about two tune. So, in terms of approximation, let's just talk about a little bit <clears throat> in terms of tune. The width of the thumb on Mickey, not myself, will be one tune, 1 1.5. This is normally known as three tune. So an approximation would be three fingers. A little bit less, actually. Okay, Mickey, why don't you take your hand, finger there. From the wrist crease up. Good, in between here to about right here. That point right there. Yep. Feel that there? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to stimulate this point again, getting in there. And we'll be on here for about 30 seconds to two or three minutes until it starts to diminish in intensity. Feeling that quite a bit? Yeah. <clears throat> when I move the wrist a little yeah. bit more? A yeah. Bit more. You can feel quite a bit. Good. So again, we're combining large intestine 11, large intestine 12, and now we moved on to triple heater five. Okay, get in there, move it around. Some interesting concepts here. In traditional Chinese medicine, they would say that you hold this point for two or three minutes until you feel the Qi moving, this sounds like a very esoteric idea, Qi either being C-H-I or Q-I. And you say, well, what has this got to do with anything? But in reality, we start doing acupuncture, you can literally feel some of these responses. There we go, right there. Make you feel that? Yep. Yep, quite a bit. So let's move on to the next point, which is triple heater 10. Something I wanna mention here too is a little bit in terms of nomenclature. If we see TB10, TH10 or TE10, they all mean the same thing. We're just talking about either triple heater, triple burner, or triple energizer. So it can get a little confusing when you actually try and look at some of the uh, information on this. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go to the electronon process, posterior elbow here, and then we're gonna go one tune above that. So Mickey, why don't you take your thumb there and above the electronon right there. It's up right about there, somewhere in that. So you feel that? Yes. Like a lot. <laughs> okay. So this is commonly used for elbow pain. And it's interesting because in, in traditional Chinese medicine, they don't just look at localized areas and say, this is what we're going to treat with this particular point. But in, we're coming to this from a musculoskeletal perspective. But if we actually take a TCM perspective, we could use this for migraine headaches, for uh, basically swellings in the area. And it also has some very strong effects on people emotionally, but we're mainly focusing on musculoskeletal health here. Okay, feel that right there, Mickey? Yes. Okay, quite a bit. Quite a bit. Okay, so 30 seconds to two or three minutes. So if I stay here for too long, I might get a hit response from Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> Doing okay? Oh yeah. All right, is it starting to ease off a little bit? Yeah. Okay, but at first you felt it quite oh, a bit. Oh, quite a bit. Yeah. So the last point we're gonna cover here is gallbladder 34. And as you can see, we've actually moved onto the leg and I'm talking about an elbow expansion. So why am I down here? 
Again, it's because we're tapping into the nervous system. We're basically going into areas where there's a thickening in fascia, 10 times the neurological receptors. So it actually affects the entire body. So location of gallbladder 34 is on the lateral aspect of the lower leg in the depression, which is anterior and inferior to the head of the fibula. So if we go on here, head of the fibula, feel that, Mickey, right yes, there? Yes. So we're gonna go a little bit forward and slightly down there, and then I'm gonna go in that point right there. Okay, how are we doing? Oh, that's tender. That is a tender spot in there. So again, we're gonna go, and we're gonna go counterclockwise for a bit. And then we're gonna go clockwise, and we're actually gonna get in and stimulate the area. Good. So in traditional Chinese medicine, they would actually use this for anything related to connective tissue. They would refer to it as working on the sinews, but why don't we just use the Western anatomical term in terms of connective tissue. And they would talk about basically moving the energy through the area. So getting the area so it actually responds. Anytime we start talking about energy, we could also talk about uh, from a Western perspective, adenotriphosphate, the mitochondria within the cell, stimulating it so we get more cellular energy. You okay there, Mickey? Yeah. Is that easing off a little, yeah, little bit there? Quite a bit, eh? Good. All right, so this is gallbladder 34. 